Hi everyone, welcome to the Microsoft ADMS channel. Today I'm going to be giving a quick overview of how users retain access to resources after migration using SID History. First let's meet our employee Derek Zoolander. He's in the source domain and you can see his logon name here is dzoolan. Now Derek's true identifier with NAD is actually this long complex string called his object SID, which is his unique identifier. Now there's no way that Derek's going to remember this long string and use it to log on to his PC every day, so that's why Active Directory provides him with this much more friendly and easy to remember logon name. Derek is also a member of a group, and that group also has a unique identifier or SID. You can see here that the first part of the string is the same because these objects are in the same domain, and then towards the end of the string they differ. When Derek wants to access some files on a server, he needs to have permissions allowing him to do so. We can see in this example that Derek's user object has permissions to this folder. We know that under the hood, this Derek Zoolander account is a friendly name associated with the account represented by Derek's SID. In most environments, we don't grant access using individual user accounts. Instead, we use security groups and what we're discussing now applies to both users and groups. So however you're applying your permissions today, the same principles will apply. So here's a high level view of how Derek gets access to this folder. When he logs onto his machine and he authenticates to AD, he obtains an access token. And that access token is populated with his user object SID and all of the SIDs for all of the groups he belongs to. When he attempts to access the folder, he presents his access token to the server, which will then compare the SIDs in Derek's token against the list of SIDs in its permissions list. If there is a match and permission is set to allow, Derek can access the files. ADMS focuses on migrating users and their workstations to a new forest. However, applications and other resources remain in the source domain, and there is at least some period of coexistence until those resources are also migrated. Some knowledge of SID history is key to understanding how users retain access to many, if not most, of their resources back in the source domain. When ADMS does its initial sync, it creates a copy of Derek's account over in the target domain. The new account has a totally unique SID because it's in a different forest. It's not connected to that source object in any way. We also synchronize groups to the target and we synchronize over the group membership. The source user is a member of the source group and the target user is a member of the target group. If Derek were to just log on using that new target account right now without having his ADMS migration, here is what would happen when he tries to access his files back in the source domain. When he logs on, his access token gets populated with his target domain user and group object SIDs. He will then present his access token to the server across the AD trust. The file server will examine the contents of his token and compare it against the permissions defined in the access control list. Because Derek does not have a match, he's going to receive an access denied. And we can see that Derek is not too happy about this. ADMS solves this problem by using SID history. In addition to creating the new user and group objects in the target domain, we bring across the SID of the source object and populate them into the SID history attribute of the corresponding target object. After migration, Derek's source account would typically, as a recommended practice, become disabled. Derek logs on using his migrated target domain account. When he creates his access token, it will be populated with all of the target domain SIDs for his user and group objects. It will also get populated with all of the values in the SID history attributes, so he gets all the source domain SIDs added to his token as well. 
When he wants to access his files on the server back in the source, he's going to present his access token to the server across the AD Trust. The file server will examine the contents of his token and compare it against the permissions defined in the access control list. Because Derek has a match, which came from that group SID history attribute, Derek's target account is granted access. Now, throughout the duration of the project, ADMS is going to continue syncing group memberships. What this means is that management of group membership must take place in the source. For example, if you try to remove users from the target domain group, they're just going to get added back at the next ADMS sync cycle. As you near the end of your ADMS migration, you're going to be starting to think about what point you want to cut over and begin onboarding new users directly into the target domain and managing all the objects over there. I mean, the whole idea is to migrate away from the source domain, right? Now, when you're ready to make that transition, we will disable the ADMS group synchronization. You will then begin to provision new users directly in the target domain and add them to the target groups. You no longer add and remove users from the source groups. The legacy groups still exist in the source domain, and the permissions on your resources back there also remain the same. What's great is that there was no reconfiguration required to allow your users this continued seamless access. At some time in the future, when you migrate your apps over to the target forest, you can update them to use the target group. But at this step in the journey, the coexistence phase, SID history provides a seamless experience for your end users and greatly simplifies migration planning for you. Thank you.